In this video, we'll learn to use the Condorcet method to find the winner of an election. So here's a typical problem. An election was held with the results shown here. Determine the Condorcet winner or explain why there is no Condorcet winner. So let's remember how the Condorcet method works. All we need to do is determine the winner of each of the possible one-on-one -on -one elections among the candidates. And then the Condorcet winner is the candidate that beats all of its opponents. So going back to our example, since we've got four candidates, there are six one-on-one -on -one matchups. A versus B, A versus C, A versus D, B versus C, B versus D, and C versus D. So we need to find the winner of each of those matchups. So how do we do that? Well, let's look at A versus B. So what we're going to do is going down each row of the table, we're just going to look at where the A's and the B's are in each of those rows. So in the first row of the table, we see that those 17 voters ranked A higher than they ranked B. So if they were voting in an A versus B election, since they like A better, they would vote for A. So those 17 votes go to A's column in that one-on-one -on -one election. In the next row of the table, those voters like B better than A, so they would vote for B, that's 11 votes for B's column. In the next row of the table, even though those voters don't seem to like A and B very much, if they had to choose between A and B, they like A better than B, so they would vote for A. In the next row of the table, those five voters vote for A, and in the last row of the table, those two voters would vote for A as well. So now we just add up all those numbers, and we get that in an A versus B election, A would get 32 votes, and B gets 11 votes. So that means that A is the winner of that one-on-one -on -one matchup. Let's look at the next one. This is an A versus C election, so in the first row of the table, those voters like A more than C, so those 17 votes would go to A. In the next row of the table, those 11 voters like C better than A, so they would vote for C. In the next row of the table, those eight voters like C better than A, so they would vote for C. Five voters would vote for A, and then two more voters would vote for A. So if we add up these totals, we get that A gets 24 votes and C gets 19 votes, and so once again, A wins the one-on-one -on -one matchup. So we can continue in this method. As you're looking through this video, make sure to pause it at each step to make sure that you're getting the same totals that I am. But it's the same process that we looked at before. So A beats D, B beats C, B beats D, and C beats D. So what's our conclusion? Well, we see that A is the Condorcet winner because it beat all of its opponents. When A was matched up against B, it won. When A was matched up against C, A won. When A was matched up against D, A won. So that means that since A beat all of its opponents, A is the Condorcet winner. So it's not about how many one-on-one -on -one matchups you win. It's about winning all of your one-on-one -on -one matchups. Let's look at another example. So again, we see a similar profile here, and once again, we're asked to use the Condorcet method to find the winner. And so we're going to do this the same way. Again, we have four candidates, so again, we have six one-on-one -on -one matchups. And I'm going to go through this quickly, but again, feel free to pause the video to make sure that you're getting the same totals that I am. B beats A, C beats A, D beats A, B beats C, D beats B, and C beats D. So again, we need to find a conclusion here. And so what do we need to look at? We need to try to find a candidate that beat all of its opponents. Well, it's certainly not A. In fact, A is what we would call a Condorcet loser, because A lost all of its one-on-one -on -one matchups. Is the Condorcet winner B? Well, B defeated A, and B defeated C, but it lost to D. So since B did not beat all of its opponents, B is not the Condorcet winner. C is also not the Condorcet winner, because it was defeated by B. And D is also not the Condorcet winner, because it was defeated by C. So none of the candidates beat all of their opponents. And so that means that there is no Condorcet winner. There is no candidate that defeated all of its opponents. Sometimes we'll call this situation a Condorcet paradox. This is the main drawback of this method, which is that sometimes it does not give you a clear winner.